Plaid Transactions fetches transaction data for credit and depository accounts from tens of thousands of financial institutions. This can be used to build an understanding of your user's financial health so they can manage their cash flow, reduce expenses, create budgets, and more. Before you get started, it's important to understand that transactions aren't set in stone. A bank might make a correction to a previous transaction, or a merchant like a hotel could remove a security deposit once a user checks out. So while you can use the get endpoint to retrieve a range of transactions for your users, we recommend using the sync endpoint in most cases. Sync will provide a more streamlined view of the transactions that have been added, modified, or removed since you last called it. So to get started with transactions, open link and create an access token like you would for any other Plaid product. If you've listed transactions in your products array, Plaid will start retrieving the user's historical transactions, starting with the most recent, but often going back up to two years. This happens gradually, so you might not see all your data right away. Next, make a call to transaction sync, passing along the access token. You'll get back a list of all the transaction data that Plaid has retrieved so far. This data is broken up into three sections. The first is the list of transactions that have been added. Plaid will provide you with all sorts of information about these transactions, like the amount and the currency code, the date it was authorized and posted, the name or description of the merchant, Plaid's attempts to create a more readable version of the merchant name, and the category, both a traditional one and, if you request it, a new personal finance category that's simpler and more accurate. Every transaction also includes a unique transaction ID. Make sure to store this ID in your database because the next section of data you'll receive are transactions that have been modified since they were added. These objects contain a complete set of data while keeping the original transaction ID so you can simply update your local records with the data you receive from this call, and just like that, all your users' transactions are up to date. Finally, you'll receive a list of transactions that have been removed. These just contain a list of transaction IDs, so you can handle these however you'd like. At the very end of this call, you'll be left with a cursor. You can kind of think of this like a bookmark. Hold on to this cursor because the next time you call sync, send along this cursor value. Plaid will then only send you a list of changes that have happened since the previous cursor. Plaid will continue to monitor this account for changes, checking one or more times a day to see if any transactions have been added, removed, or modified. As we find new data, we'll let you know by sending you a Sync Updates Available webhook. When you receive this webhook, make a call to Transaction Sync, passing along the most recent cursor you have, of course, to retrieve all the new data that we have for this item. Don't feel like listening to webhooks? You can also just make your own Sync calls once or twice a day, it's really up to you. Plaid can also identify recurring transactions, like subscriptions and bill payments. Request access in the Plaid dashboard or talk to your account manager to activate this add-on feature. Once you do, you can make a call to Transactions Recurring Get with an array of the accounts you're interested in. Plaid will return a summary of recurring transactions within these accounts. We'll include useful information about the transactions, like the frequency, amount, and the date that it first occurred, along with a list of all the transaction IDs that make up this recurring transaction. You can use this data to help users better manage their subscriptions and identify ones they're paying for but no longer using. This has been Plaid Transactions in 3 Minutes. To find out more about transactions, check out our documentation and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can find out about the full tutorial as soon as it's available. Happy planning!